Close your eyes and watch your breath. When the breath comes in, watch it coming in. When it goes out, watch it going out. And then again and again and again. Just stay right here. Remind yourself that the breath is the force of life. So you want it to be comfortable. If the breath is not comfortable, it's not going to be as good for the body or as good for the mind as it could be. So pay attention to how it feels as it comes in and goes out and ask yourself if longer breathing would feel better or shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. You need to take an interest in the breath in order to stay with it. This is a quality of what the Buddha calls one of the bases of success, and that you're really intent on in what you're doing. There are actually four bases altogether. The first is desire. You really want to do this. In other words, you see the problems that come when your mind isn't trained. Your thoughts are all over the place, and you want to get some control over them. So you have the desire, how do I get some control over the mind? Then when you learn the right way, then you apply your persistence. You just stick with it. And it doesn't mean just brute force. You have to learn how to make yourself interested in it. That's the third quality. Take an interest in what you're doing. Anything you do in life, if you're not really interested in it, you're not going to do it well. But if you pay attention, if you're really intent on what you're doing, then you see things you wouldn't have seen otherwise, and you can solve problems you wouldn't have otherwise been able to solve, or sometimes wouldn't even have known existed, and just be hidden away. But when you pay careful attention to things, again, then you begin to realize that what's going on in your mind, and all the different tricks that the mind has of fooling itself to think about something it doesn't really want to think about, or think about things that are bad for it. You have to pay careful attention to see through these things. And then the, finally there's the quality of circumspection. In other words, you try to do this really well. You look at things from all sides. Just because you have a good idea doesn't mean that it's going to be good 100%. So you want to test it, look at it from different angles. In the same way, when you come up with a problem in the mind, look at it from different angles to see what ways you can figure out to get past it. That's the active discernment part of the basis of success. So you've got four altogether, there's desire, and of course it's desire focused in the right way. Sometimes we hear the Buddha was against desire, but that's not the case. Desire is an important part of the path. Without it, you wouldn't be doing any right effort. You have the desire, and then you have the persistence. You stick with it. And then there's the in quality of interest and intentness. So you really pay careful attention to what you're doing, and then finally there's circumspection. You try to be as careful and all-around skillful about this as you can. You take these four qualities, you can apply them to any aspect of life, any chore that you have, any job you have, any task that you set for yourself, and they'll lead to success. But in particular, they lead to success as you train your mind, as you focus everything here on the breath. Try to figure out the problems of why the mind, once you've told it to do something, doesn't, doesn't do that, goes off and does something else. Why are there traitors in the mind? Why is there a revolution going on in the mind? Why can't there be a little bit more order to things? Once you set that question up in your mind, then you focus on solving it, and you use the techniques of meditation to help give you a handle on your own mind. That's how the meditation succeeds, because it succeeds at doing something that really does go deep into your own heart. It's not just a game that you play and then you can put aside. It's something that really solves some problems that sometimes you don't even realize are our problems, you just accept them as the way things are. But the Buddha says the fact that we're causing ourselves to suffer, that's a big problem. We want to focus on that. And these are the tools for doing it. 